If you want a foolproof way to writing the methodology section for your research paper, then you're in the right place. Because in this video, I'm going to first of all show you the three absolutely necessary elements that you must include in your methodology section, regardless of which field you're in. And I'm also going to show you some of the optional elements that you might need to include, depending on which field you're in. And finally, you want to stick around until the end, because I'm also going to show you examples from real published research papers, so that you can see how these elements are applied and written in practice in different fields so that's clear for you as well and you can go off and finish writing the methodology of your paper so let's dive right in now if you're new here my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now where I help PhD students and researchers regularly write research papers so if you're enjoying this video hit the like button subscribe so you don't miss future videos so what are these three necessary elements that you must include in any research paper, in any methodology section of any research paper? Well, first of all, and they are in this order that you must include them, first of all, you need to talk about what or who you studied and how you got this thing or people. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're studying sort of inanimate objects, like, I don't know, like some enzymes or particles and things like that well you need to tell us like you know what it is that you studied how you got this thing did you you know produce it yourself did you buy it somewhere uh, you know was there a process for producing this thing how much of this thing you studied and so on right similarly if you're studying you know animate objects or like animals human beings bacteria all that kind of stuff you also need to tell us like you know, what it is, who are these people that you studied? How did you get these um, people? You know, and the same works for like, of like bacteria or maybe, um, you know, animals. How many were there? What, what sort of animals were there? Um, how did you get these animals? Where did you get them from? And things like that, right? So that's the first element, very often referred to as the sample and sampling techniques. You know, if you're studying human, uh, humans, then you might refer to it as participants, right? So that's number one key element you must include right at the start of the methodology. Number two, you need to tell us what you did in the study. In other words, you need to talk about the research tools and procedures. So basically, whether you're studying human beings or like inanimate objects or animals, it doesn't really matter what you're studying. The procedure is still the same for this part of the methodology. What you're going to talk about is the research tool that you use. So to give you an example from like qualitative studies, maybe you used an interview, right? Or you use the questionnaire if you're doing something quantitative. Or maybe you use some sort of like a microscope, right? Or some sort of machine to measure something. This is your instrument, right? This is your research tool. So you need to tell us what this tool is and how it was used in your study. In other words, you need to talk about the procedures and what you did step by step, how this research tool was used, right? So that's element number two that you must include and typically it comes after talking about the participants of your study or the sample, right? And then the third absolutely essential element that will be there in every single methodology section of every single experimental paper is the data analysis section. So in this section, you want to talk about, you know, the data analysis techniques. In other words, how was your data analyzed? Did you, use, did you use specific statistical tests to analyze it? Maybe you used a specific software to analyze it? And why did you use these statistical tests and not other tests? And also, what, what was the procedure, right? What did you do step by step to analyze your data and you must include it whether you're doing a quantitative study and you're using statistical tests and things like that and whether you're doing a qualitative study right and you're using some sort of like grounded theory or data analysis techniques that are appropriate for qualitative studies you must tell us like what data analysis technique you used and how they were used step by step so on top of these three key elements that you must include in any methodology section of any research paper, there are also two additional elements that you might consider including depending on which field you're in and what sort of study you're doing. So the first of them is what could be called something like the research context. In other words, 
where your study was conducted. And this obviously applies to studies where the context in which the study was con conducted, the location, is important to the methodology and to the data. Therefore, it typically applies to qualitative studies where the location where you conducted the data is important. But it can also apply to certain quantitative studies. For example, one of my clients is studying the emigration, the forced emigration after cyclones in Bangladesh, right? So obviously where his study is conducted, meaning uh, the south coast of Bangladesh, is very important to the data collection and to the rest of the methodology, right? Therefore, for him as well, even though his study is completely quantitative, you know, he needs to talk about that study context. So what would you include in that part? Well, first of all, you know, you want to include elements that are relevant to your research question. So in his case, for studying, you know, emigration after cyclones, you know, you probably want to talk about stuff like temperature, any, uh, you know, humidity, um, you know, the seasons, the, anything to do with cyclones and what causes cyclones, but also anything to do with like, you know, the geography of the place that might force people to emigrate after a cyclone, right? So that's the first additional element. Where would you include it? Typically, it would be the first element of the methodology. So it would even go before you talk about the participants, right? Now, the second additional element is ethical considerations. I'm including it as an additional element because if you're not studying human or animal subjects, right? You don't need ethical considerations. I mean, if you're studying enzymes or some sort of particles, well, ethical considerations are irrelevant, right? But obviously, if you're studying animals or um, human beings, you need ethical considerations. And there are two ways of going about including it. One way is to simply include two or three sentences in the section about participants. And this is by far the most common thing to do. Another thing that you could consider if your ethical considerations are super, super important for your study, you could have a small section in your methodology where you're going to talk in a little bit more depth about the ethical considerations. But in my experience, um, seeing a lot of research papers published and helping a lot of clients publish research papers, what is most commonly done is that you include like two or three sentences in the section about the participants of your study, right? So these are the two additional elements. Now, let's now look at two examples of two different research papers and let's see how this is actually done in a research paper. So let's just look at methodologies sections of two different research papers. One will be more social sciences where we're studying human participants and the other one will be more exact sciences where we're studying sort of enzymes and things like that, right? So that you can see how this is done in those two different completely different fields and we're going to talk about the essential elements of the methodology section that I've just presented to you. All right, so let's dive right in. So in this, in this case, this is more sort of social sciences oriented paper, right, uh, where we have human participants. And as you can see, the first section of the methodology is participants, right? And then you discuss exactly who took part in your study and who was studied, right? 150 recruiters took part in this survey, right? And I say who they were, right? And who wasn't recruited. Um, and then, you know, I also present a little bit more detail about these people and I describe it further, right? So there is quite a lot of detail about who took part in this study um, because it's important. Um, for the for the study, right? So this is about the participants. And I mentioned one sort of additional element that you can include in the methodology section, and this is the ethical consideration. And you might remember that I said that typically it's just included as part of, you know, the participants, right? And usually it's just like two or three sentences in here, it's just two, right? Um, so, you know, I just say that they were informed about the study, right? That's the easiest thing to do, just include the ethical considerations when you're talking about the participants, right? Once we've got participants out of the way, we talk about the research tools and procedures. Now, if you've got more than one research tool, right? So maybe you used questionnaires and then you also interviewed people, then you wanna present them 
um, in that order as well. And basically, you know, what you do is, you know, is you define the research tool that you use. In this case, it was a questionnaire and it was based on questionnaires used in previous studies, right? And, you know, and then I say how this questionnaire was modified, you know, because it was based on previous studies and, you know, sort of what questions were asked in that questionnaire. So I basically just present that research tool, right? And then the second research tool in this case was interviews. And these are again presented. And after that, as you can see, the third essential element is data analysis techniques. And again, this is super simple. Like, you know, statistics were used. These are the types of statistics that we used. And then to analyze qualitative data, you know, we use this methodology and this is how it worked, right? So super simple. And that's what you need to do in data analysis techniques. Now, what do you do if you're, you know, more in sort of like um, exact sciences? Well, this in this case is called experimental section. It is very often called materials and methods as well. It kind of depends on the field that, that you're in, right? But you do what we've just discussed. Like first you present what you studied. And in this case, it's called materials. It's not called participants because there are no human participants. It's just like materials that you study, right? But you want to tell us like what these materials were specifically, you know, where you obtained them from, if you bought them, or how did you produce these materials, right? And then notice that it's not called research tools and procedures, but basically, you know, we've got the name of, you know, of the procedure that was carried out and then it's presented what was done, right? And this is done for every single thing, right? Um, so those research tools and procedures are presented like that one by one. And this is really useful if, you know, you've you had a lot of different types of procedures, a lot of different tools that you used, you know, you use like a microscope and you use this and you use that, then it's easier to present it like this, right? And notice that you don't have to call it research tools and procedures. You can just name the procedure that you're, that you're doing, but you're doing exactly the same thing, right? You're kind of telling us what this procedure is and then specifically what was done in the study. And lastly, you know, the third element is the data analysis, right? So in here it's just called statistical analysis because of course, you know, this was all statistics, right? And again, it's, it's pretty short, simple, but you know, you just want to say what statistical techniques were used and how they were used. And that's, and that's basically it, right? So these are the three main elements that you need to include if you're writing the methodology for a research paper. Now, if you're finding this valuable, but you want more personalized help writing and publishing research papers, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team. The link is right below this video. And um, they're gonna get on a one-to-one -one call where we're going to identify what your biggest challenges are, what you want to achieve, and then we'll outline a personalized action plan that will help you to achieve those goals. And then if it sounds like it's a good fit and we can help you, we can talk further about what working together would look like.